This podcast is brought to you by GA Sports. GA Sports is home of the O'Connor Slitter, Ireland's number one hurling ball used by 311 clubs nationwide. Hello and you're welcome to this week's Back to the Football Show. Today I've been joined by Shane Ryan and Finian Handley. Um, firstly, lads, you're obviously both involved in clubs. Um, challenge matches now beginning to heat up. Um, probably seeing a lot of matches uh, outside the county because no one wants to really give Anton away. And the club championship this year is probably going to be better than it ever was. Yeah, I suppose, like, um, I think... It's certainly going to, um, you know, something we actually spoke about in tip with a meeting with the players the other night and just to say that we wouldn't be training and things like that. And we actually put huge emphasis on the club championship this year. There are going to be like trial games for the county team. I think that's actually going to be very beneficial for all, all county players, to be quite honest with you. And, um, you know, uh, you know, it's actually hard in Mornaby uh, to get games for ourselves because uh, no one wants to play us. You pick up the phone and, oh, no, no, we won't play you. So it's... Um, Look, it's, it's difficult to get games uh, for us, I suppose, at the moment. We just have to get on with it. Um, we'll, uh, you know, I know there's loads of games going on. As you can see them every night, there's, there's, there's games going on. And I think that, look, it's fantastic. There's, a, there's a, such a buzz and an appetite from challenge games at the moment. Is The challenge game, if there was, you know, if there was someone had a marketing thing for, for, for arranging challenge games and was charging for it, they'd be making a fortune at this stage because it, it's just happening everywhere. I've never heard of so many challenge games, but everybody's just mad for action and mad for games. And I think it's, you know, I think it's it's actually great that um, that people aren't um, going bananas training, you know, non-stop running and all this kind of stuff that they're looking for challenge games. I think that's that's very positive. And look, people want to go out and play. And I think that's what people came back to, you know, everybody wants to come back and play. Uh, everybody didn't want to come back to be um, running around the field non-stop. So, look, we're you know up to ourselves trying to get the challenge games at the moment. Not not proving very easy, but look, it's great to see the amount of challenge games that are being played. I think it's fantastic. And even for yourselves and Saul Tim Finney, and, um, you've obviously got a few more players returning this year. Sean Armstrong, Nevin Murphy, obviously standing out. So you must be delighted to have them back and to avoid a couple of big teams in Galway as well. Must be must be a huge bonus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose, uh, look, you know, given our record uh, in the early rounds of the championship over the last few years, we, we won't be taking anything for granted. Um, you know, Salt Hill have won, you know, have won three championships ever. So, uh, to, you know, we, we can't sit on any horse saying that, that, that anything is going to be easy. It's all going to be tough. We, you know, every game in the Galway championship, as you know, is um, is tough. Um we, we, we have a couple of players kind of back due to COVID. We had lads that were due to go away. We had lads that were away in the States uh, on Erasmus with college and stuff, and they've had to come back. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, lo- we're lucky enough, enough in that regard. And I suppose in Salt Hill, we're, look, we're blessed. We're, we're, we're in the city. We're one of the biggest clubs in the west of Ireland. Um, you know, we're an underachieving club. Um, we we massive population, but um, it's very hard to pull all that together given all the distractions that go on in in cities, uh, you know, in a city like Galway as well. So we we find it quite difficult for whatever reason it is. But uh, you know, hopefully this year we can we can get everyone molded in. We have some good young guys in the Galway under twenty squad, and we have three or four in the Galway senior squad as well. So um, yeah, it, sh- it it should be a good good year to push on and, and 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 try and do something. You know, get to the latter stage of the championship. But as I said, we um, we get nothing easy, easy in Galway. We haven't for, for the last number of years. We've been beaten in four or five first rounds. So uh, to get ourselves ready for the first round now after coming back and in the short time frame is going to be difficult. So uh, all hands on deck. Challenge matches are happening. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're kind of after for Finn in that group of Anna Down and Montpellier um, where you will get challenge games because no one will play Curve Finn uh, for a number of reasons. So um, we're getting some good games. Um, you know, from Clare, from from Mayo, and from Ross Common as well. So that should stand to us in preparation. Yeah, and I just want to touch on something here before we move on to Andy McIntyre's comments. Basically, for young lads who are coming into club squads, county squads, like is belief a huge issue? Because I've seen it my from my own being involved in underage teams when you're coming up against the Clare Galway or Clare Finn, and you don't really feel that the young players can believe in that squad. And honestly. Drinking culture has become massive for you, for younger people breaking into squads as well, Shane. Yeah, um, you know, I think the belief thing with the younger players coming in, I think that actually has to come from, um, apart from coming from themselves, I think the, you know, the older players in the squad 
have to, I suppose, show them um, that they they believe in them. And you know, if the player, young players come in confident enough and they're able to play, and the older players then are um, you know are very supportive and they, you know, they, they show them what standards they're meant to be they're meant to be setting. And I think if they can embrace those younger players, that'll give them belief. Like we've. We've always had the policy there in Mornabi of um, bringing in, we bring in a couple of young ones every year. Like you know, we've a couple of under under 15s training with us now this year, and uh, you know we've started girls. We started the girl in the county final two years ago. It was only 14, um, you know, and two years ago, two years before that, you know, another girl started. She was under 15. She got two goals in the county final. Why? Because th- she had belief in her confidence in her own ability, but the girls knew how good she was. And I think that that radiated into her then, then so she got belief in herself. And I think, it, you, you know, you have to be confident in yourself, number one. Um, not overconfident, obviously, but you have to have that confidence that, um, you know, to take the knocks of senior football and, you know, of adult football. And same with, same with Tip, a lot of the younger girls we brought in were full of confidence and the older girls saw straight away they had the ability. And I think that all the belief then just you know, it, it comes from within them and comes from outside the squ- outside their outside their their circle, their own circle, and I think you know all that. It's it, it's up to I think it's it's very individual, and I think if you know I think if you if players believe in themselves and the other players believe in them, um, you know I think you've got you've got a good system there then, and you know they will they will they will stay concentrated then, and they'll you know they they won't stand straight to the things that they're not meant to be doing like but. Look, they all have to live their lives as well, and um, you know we, we can't stop them doing that. And but you know heads go down then when 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 and you know knuckle down when when it kind of becomes serious. We never put drink bands in with Tip or with Mon Abbey and all that kind of stuff. They, the girls just kind of police themselves, and they're they're very very dedicated. I think you know if you can create that belief culture within the squad, then the younger players coming in won't have an issue. And then you've obviously seen it up front, like um, the majority of your team coming tra- through now is the younger players coming through onto the senior squad. And obviously commitment can be an issue, obviously for a city club, it's a lot harder. Um, but you've seen it up front, obviously. Yeah, definitely. And I suppose it's, it's unfortunately, it's a very significant point to our club because we've, you know, over the last number of years at underage, you know, Salt Hill has been very strong, you know, winning fail as uh, under 16 minors and under 20s, you know, we've won five minors, I think, in a row. Uh, under 20s, um, you know, we're always competing, and obviously with numbers, it's just, you know, it's it, it, with with the numbers we have, we'll always compete at underage. But we've we've found it very very hard to get bridge that gap between 18 and and into senior for whatever reason. We won our first under 21 slash 20 championship last year in 30 years. Um, which is which, which is mind blowing, really, you know. Um, but we have won minors, and we won five or six minors, you know, in the last couple, in the last number of years as well. So bridging that gap has always been an issue in in, in Salt Hill, and I suppose you've got, you know, um, people coming in from outside the county as well, moving to Salt Hill and playing. Um, you know, some lads are young lads in the panel, and they see guys coming in and moving to the city, or moving to Salt Hill and playing with Salt Hill and. You know they might feel that oh well you know I might leave it now because sure haven't they got this guy and that guy coming in, um you know so 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 our imports into the club as well may not have helped that, um and then and then you've just got distractions you've got a lot of lads playing soccer, you know um Scalby United uh, Connacht Rugby Academies and stuff like that as well which is attractive for lads uh, and they're interested in it so getting lads to stay playing club football especially given the fixture pile up that you don't know when you're going to be playing. It's a lot easier to go and play every Saturday with Salt Hill Devon or every Sunday with, with Galwegians or Connacht Rugby or whatever it is. So um, the belief thing, you know, some guys are able for it. You know, I know when we came in, we came in quite strong off our underage, Sean Armstrong, myself, uh, Rory McTiernan and that crew, and we went on to win the All-Ireland and it worked out. There was a blend between our younger guys uh, and and the older guys that were there, we you know really really good strong characters in Morris Sherd and Michael Donnan, um, and these guys. So you know you do as Shane said, you do need the older guys, you know bringing guys along. But some sometimes it's not, you know you know guys coming in wanted handed on a plate, and you know it's not for the faint hearted either. And if you're eighteen or nineteen and you're you get a bit of criticism, it might be easier to walk away and say sure look, you know I'm not being a sub here or whatever. So sometimes you. You can have petulance as well, but uh, you know, senior club football has, has, has got tough over the years. Um, you know, as long as I've played, it's been tough, and and you have to be mentally strong as well as that. And you know, maybe there's a bit of mental weakness in in some guys nowadays when they're coming into panels, and um, they want it a bit easier. So um, yeah, we've definitely struggled over the last while. 
And just to Andy McEntee's comments before we move on to a couple of the club draws, um, Shane, he basically said, who is right to stop uh, fellas living a healthy lifestyle? Uh, baffling comments, really, just basically saying that there's only a healthy lifestyle in county and none in club, but like obviously being involved in club, all of us, we've seen that club is massively involved and it's got so professional. Yeah, look, I think at all levels, um, club football is very, you know, it has has moved on and has become very professional, you know, probably too professional in some setups, but, uh, you know, you could have, you could dare say there's definitely club setups in the, around the country there that are, if not more professional than um, inter county setups. And I just think it's, um, you know, from a man that won in All Ireland with Bally Bowden, you know, I'm sure he, he didn't feel that when he was with Bally Bowden. And I think it's just, I just think it's, it, it, it's, it's very unfair. I don't think there's any need of it. Um, you know, obviously he must be under pressure. Um, and I can't understand it because, you know, as I said, at this day, I think, I think the huge thing this year is going to be the attraction of the club game. And I think one of the one of the things as well, um, I think with, with this year, you know, a lot of the time during the summer, you've got 35 players in your county squad. Um, you know, you're out playing championship football. And how many of them are actually getting game time? You know, there's, you use five subs or six subs in a day. That's 21 players. There's 14 other guys maybe who are not getting to play. They're not being released back to their clubs. Whereas this summer, they're going to get a pile of games before they come into the county squad. Uh, they all have got a fair crack at the whip. You're looking at them all. We've said that in, in tip this year now that we're putting a huge emphasis in the club championship. We want to see them playing with their clubs, um, showing leadership with their clubs, being the county players with their clubs. And I think, you know, it, it's this this year is going to be different and, and maybe this might be the way to go that we have this club championship. We get it played, um, you know, and then then you can, they can go into the county and surely there's going to be guys there on his panel that who might have been maybe down at number 30 on his panel might have a super club championship, got all these games that they wouldn't have got during the summer, even in challenge games, because challenge games become very messy when you bring on, when you make all these wholesale changes. Whereas if they're playing competitive football with their club, and they're shining, and they come in full of confidence, and who knows how, how good they can be for me or for any other county. Exactly. And Billion, did you always find like when you were playing with Galway, returning back to the club, like are you able to give it your hundred percent commitment? Because you can often see it like after a hard year, it's hard to get back up to that level again um, after such a tough year. Yeah, um, sometimes, yeah, I suppose if you come in, if you come back after, you know, we've we had a lot of disappointments and you come back after losing a championship match and it might be hard, it might take a week or, or two, but, you know, you kind of get back on the horse and as Shane says there, look, if, if you're not, you're not doing it for your club, sure you're wasting your time going out to county training, you know, and I suppose I always felt, especially particularly on the back of bad games and I had enough of them, you know, uh, you'd come back and you'd want to still be the best player or one of the best players on the club pitch because, you know, if you're not, then you need to ask serious questions of yourself. And now what I'm seeing is with the club, I'm seeing our sure it's a place to go where you can, you know, you know, you might sit a game out. I see lads in the county panel sitting out championship games, you know, so the mentality is all wrong there. Like like to sit out a championship hour the county manager told me to to take a take take a bit off or the physio, the county physio told me to take it off. But like really everyone should be pushing with their clubs and, and being the best player of their clubs. And I think, you know, Port Joyce, you know, being the club man he, he was and, and is, you know, he put a big emphasis on the club and I hope he does that that these club games are where lads, you know, management managers like Shane and county managers like Shane and, and Port Joyce and these guys can go and sit down and, and actually see players and say, look, this these guys are stand out above the rest. So anyone that asks me about different players or whatever, if they're in black and white, four best players on the pitch were the four lads I have in the county panel. And, and and it's as simple as that. You know, you can come back from county feeling sorry for yourself, but you know, really you're you're you know, after a week you're happy enough to get back into it. It's a little bit of a step down, but it's a it's a big step down in in, in, in you know standard, I would say, between club and county. But effort and and minding yourself, you know, you're 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 really keeping the same mantra going throughout. So so you know it's and it's a little bit more enjoyable. Exactly. Um we're going to come to you first, uh, Shane. We'll get you first to explain uh, the structure of the court championship, and then we'll go through your predictions who you think are going to progress. But first, basically, for the listeners who don't know the Cork Senior Football Championship uh, structure, could you explain it to us, please? Yeah, they've, they've split it up this year. There's a um, uh, Premier Senior is the top grade, and there's um, you have three groups of four teams. Um, 
who based on their previous the last few years results were graded uh, into those and then you also have the division and colleges section the division and colleges section uh, one team goes through from that section uh, into the quarterfinals uh, one group winner goes to semi-finals the other two group winners go to quarterfinals and the sec- three second place teams go to quarterfinals Bit, sounds a bit complicated, but we say there's one team through, and there's six teams then in the quarterfinals who would play off for the remaining three semi-final places. Um, it's a new format this year. Um, it was again tweaked because of the of the COVID situation. There was meant to be three teams going through from each group. There's only two teams going through now, and obviously only one team comes through the divisional section. Uh, the divisional section this year and the college section has been reduced because. Um, Certain divisions have opted out, and CIT, who always enter the Senior Football Championship in Cork as well, they've opted out as well. So there's only four teams in the division section this year, Beira, Duhalo, UCC, and the, and the Carberry division. Uh, so one team will come through from that. Um, I suppose looked at with the divisional situation, um, some of the divisions just opted out. They couldn't, they have so many teams, so many games to fulfil, junior championship, uh, junior uh, intermediate championship. They, they couldn't get it done, so that's why... Some of the teams have opted out, but those four have stayed in it. Um, and look, there's there's so many unbelievable groups in it. The group does it, the West Cork group with they're calling it the, the four West Cork teams ended up in the in the one group, and you know that's going to be very cutthroat. And um, you know West Cork is people often say they, people are asking them where they're from, and they say West Cork. They don't say Cork, like you know it's kind of a, they're, they're they're their own area down there. They're they're a little bit different to the, to, to the rest of Cork, you know, and. Uh, to have four teams in the one group is going to be, you know, very exciting down there. Like, and look, you the usual suspects, you know, Nemo and the Bars, and um, you know, I think Duhalo, if Duhalo can get all their players together, uh, they might be divisional set up, but they've got to the last two finals, but they've got a serious pedigree of player down there, and um, you know, it will be difficult for them this year, though. I think Duhalo to get it, keep to keep it going because of the way the amount of games they've played over a short period of time. So you're you're looking at. You know, on Group A there, uh, you have the Bars, Carrigaline, Clan, Clan Kilty and Ballon Colleagues. You know, I, like the Bars, the Bars should come out, and I think it's probably a toss of a coin between Clan Kilty and Ballon Colleague who, who will come out with them. Uh, group B, the Group of Death with the news, uh, you've got Newcastle, Island Rovers, Carberry Rangers, Castlehaven. I probably look the probably the Haven and Carberry Rangers. I would maybe predict to come out there. Group C is um, three city clubs and and Valley Rovers, Bishopstown, Douglas. Nemo Rangers and Valley Rovers. Um, I, I, Nemo will definitely come out, I think. And look, if Douglas get their act together, um, they've got a very strong team. I think they'll come out of that as well. And look, uh, if it, all things being equal, I would say, you look, you're looking at uh, Nemo winning it again. I would say, um, you know, the bars and bars will go close. If Douglas get their act together, I think Douglas can be very, very strong. And look, you can't rule out the likes of the Haven either. Like the, if they get the bit between their teeth down there in West Cork, you know. Um, but I think it'll, I think it'll come down to between the bars, uh, Nemo, and um, you know, I think obviously Douglas can, can Douglas can be there thereabouts as well. And as I say, look, if the Hello can keep their players going, but I, I think it's going to be very difficult for any divisional side this year. You know, in Cork, um, you know, in McKilly are going for four in a row in the Hurling, and you know, they, they should win it. All things being equal, but this year is going to be a different year. So. I, look, it's, it's probably looking like Nemo again. They've they've won three of the last five, so mm. you you couldn't really look past them. I just want to touch on something there. If you're looking at four big clubs and different counties, you look at Kerfin, Nemo, Vincent's, Doctor Croaks. The culture within this club, it's all about skills, not winning games, just skills. There's great coaches across all them different age groups. But then you see in some clubs you have parents involved because they want to be involved because there's son on the team they want to have him as free taker captain everything um is it basically the culture in these clubs finian is why you're seeing nemo rangers croaks vincent's curfin all these kind of clubs so successful yeah you're right yeah definitely it's um it is a cultural thing now i know in curfin i can speak for curfin you know kind of in knowing them playing against them since i was nine and ten um you know they're they're they're, they they coach the skills but you know when you've got independent people in clubs 
uh, as you said, I know, I know, you know, it's a sticky moment with parents, and look, you can't turn parents away uh, uh, when they're involved with their own kids growing up and things like that. And then, you know, parents can be involved in senior management as well, and 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 that leads to issues. But I, you know, I don't agree with it. I think if you can have an independent coach in clubs, you know, like Kerfin and Frank Morris for all those years, and now they have David Morris involved. Um, kind of, you know, ruling the roost there at senior level, but he's definitely keeping an eye, carrying on his father's um, work uh, on 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 the underage structure. You know, he's looking at players objectively, and he's, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, who's your neighbour, who your uncle was, or who your parents are. You know, they don't really care. It's 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 the same strategy and the same structure for all their kids growing up and how they play, kick passing. You know, the skills. You know, practicing the skills all the time. You know. Uh, and I know, you know, I know other clubs have tried to copy that model, uh, and I presume it's the same. I don't know, but I presume it's the same in the likes of Croaks. I know, you know, Croaks and 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 clubs like that, Slough Neil, and 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 the really successful clubs, um, that it, that it is. But you know, I know in my own club, we have a lot of parents involved, and um, as I said, we've lost players at underage. You know, some players are have gone on, have moved club because they were picked in goals in Salt Hill at under fourteen. And they've gone on to play um, um, under 20 county at centre back and centre forward and turned into absolute gems for other clubs. So, you, you, you know, there's a possibility that if you're the, if you're a father and you're looking around, you mightn't see what's in this guy. You might say, sure, look, you go on goals uh, and then you're losing out on a really, really good player. Whereas if you have a Frank Morrison or an objective eye that comes in uh, and looks at it from an overview and says, look, I can see the skills in this guy. I can see what this guy is good at. And you're not looking at it with a personal mindset. So uh, I do think it's a, it's a good point. I do think, you know, having parents involved where you have to, but I think an overall person managing the lot and having a, an outside view is very important for, for clubs. And I think those clubs you mentioned are doing that. And would you agree with that as well, Jane? Yeah, look, definitely. Look, even within looking from the, the Nemo setup, um, you know, Nemo make make a point of it every year that they they don't try to win underage competitions. That they want to get as many fellas playing as possible, and um, you know, and, they, and that and that's the philosophy. And they also have a huge philosophy within the club of um, former players getting back involved in the teams. You know, and uh, you know, speaking to James Masters last year, who he, he stepped down from the as coach of the ladies footballers in Cork, and he said, "Look, I want to give something back to the club." Because he hadn't been involved previous, and look, you see the likes of Billy Morgan, like he's well into his seventies, and he's still stuck in the middle of it. Like, and on all the, if you look back through their, their senior managers down through the years, like their senior Cork, Cork senior players, the Cavanaghs and all these guys, you know, and they're all still involved. And it's something, you know, they don't, and they don't like. There's, you never hear of a Nemo, um, fell involved in Nemo involved with another club. It's just frowned upon. Like Billy Morgan was involved with in Mitchestown. And the only reason Billy got involved in Mitchestown was Mitchestown were two grades below Nemo. And, you know, Nemo, Nemo fellas don't get involved with the same, um, you know, with, with, with the clubs in their, you know, in their own grade. Like Billy's, Billy's the, the guru in UCC for the Sigerston team. And the county team, the, you know, the club, te- they play as a club team in the county championship. And Billy steps down every year because he won't manage a team against Nemo. And that's the philosophy within Nemo. And I think, you know, that's the, the way they're, they're brought up in Nemo. It's all about the club. And they have that structure. And that's probably why they're, they are so successful. They're look, the most successful team in Cork. But, and there's a reason for that. And as you know, look, a lot of other clubs are trying to do it. It is hard because in some clubs, there, there isn't anybody else but the parents. But look, um, I, we strive to, 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 to do, the, do, do the best best you can. And often, you know, look, the way they're doing it, is is a great model, same as Corfin and on all these other clubs. They had that culture within the club, and I think that's very important. Now, uh, Finian, we'll just touch on the Noisy Neighbours Championship for you, uh, Mayo. Um, so four groups to four, um, top two getting out, then progressing into quarterfinals. The bottom team goes into relegation playoff. I suppose we'll touch the groups, uh, group by group. So uh, group one, you have Daniil, Gary Moore, Balahadrine, and Bell Mullet. Um, I suppose most of the teams in that group will fancy their chances, anyways. Yeah, standout. I suppose Balahadrine, you know, given their 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 player base, you know, Andy Moore will be back there knocking around this year, and um, um, they have the Drakes, you know, a, you know, a, a good traditional Mayo team. They should come out of that quite handy. Um, you know, the Neil with young Tommy Conroy there. They're a young team just come up. Um, you know, 
could 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 follow them out of the group. But I think Balladrine would be your pick of that group there. There's, you know, uh, Mayo obviously there is is like Galway. It's quite tiered. You know, there's the the haves and haves not have nots, and there's the you know the top kind of half, and 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 then the rest are normally fighting relegation. But I think Balladrine there will be your 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 standout team. Are they are they contenders to win it? I don't think so. But but certainly you know to get to a quarter and semi final, they're well worth their value. Yeah. I just want to touch on the group of death. Um, it's an unbelievable group. Bravey, Westport, Castlebear, and Charlestown. Um, Bravey obviously have those Shays, Ram, Rob Henley. Westport won an intermediate all ahead, and Phil McDonough, and Lee Keegan, Castlebear, Alan Flynn now involved. And Charlestown, obviously, with the tragic scenes that happened there, you could see that they're being motivated to do something this year as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's it, it, it's it's a tough group. It's a tough group. Obviously, Westport were a common team. You know, have they reached the standards and heights that they thought they were going to reach when 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 James Horn was over them? I don't know. It's very hard to break into the top three in Mayo. Um, you know, they really have the monopoly there. Um, I think it's between Brafey and 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 Castle Bear there. Uh, to come out, I think the other two teams won't compete with the level that Castlebar and Brafey at. Castlebar are my favourites for for the Mayo Championship this year, um, given that Alan Flynn is involved with them. I just think, you know, Alan's got experience, but you know, any most teams that he touches, he brings a massive professionalism to it. Uh, to be fair to him, you know, and uh, you know, he, he, teams mightn't be able to do it for four or five years because it's. It's 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 quite intense, uh, you know. From what I know, it's quite intense. But he'll have them organised to the hilt, and they already have the players, they already have the population. So to bring in a man like that is a great coup because he will have them, he will have them raring to go, and 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 he he'll be thinking, you know, once we get over Mayo, he won't be stopping there. He'll be looking to go one step for, for further. Brafey, brilliant side, obviously the O'Shea's and. You know, Ruan and, and, and Henley and these guys driving it on have you know they've they've underachieved. They thought they probably at this stage they would have got over the line and won a championship but with Ballantubber and, and, and Castle Bar being so strong the last number of years. You know, they've been there and thereabouts, but they've never got there. So I don't see them getting there this year. I think Castle Bar will win that group and Brafey will come out with them. Then uh, back to group three, uh, Ballinar are obviously a team blessed with county players as well. Um, Jerk Kafke, Evan Regan's had a stint, Mikey Murray got a stint last year, David Clare can go as um, Jerk Kafke as well. Um, then Claire Morris and Knockmore have had huge success in underage, and um, Kiltane's main objective will probably be to avoid relegation. Yeah, yeah, just three big three big names there, you know, like Knockmore and Ballinar. When I was starting playing and club in the early 2000s you know Ballina were you know obviously they had Rona McGarry you know um, Kevin O'Neill was playing for, for Knockmore um, you know uh, Aidan Kilcoyne and these guys they were two big clubs but both clubs fell off the fell off the planet you know Ballina I think went to intermediate uh, or, or thereabouts and had to come back up again and rebuild but you know Ballina have, 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 have bodies down there in, in, in you know they've got they've got the population to, to do something if they can get it right um, Claire Morris, uh, we actually played Claire Morris there recently. Uh, a very good side, not a huge number of, of county players, but um, very well organised, very well drilled, good setup, and good, you know, good traditional Mayo club. So, you know, I think they could cause a surprise there. My my predictions there would be not more on Claire Morris to come out of that group. Um, but 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 I think um, yeah, a good fresh young team like Claire Morris, and then you know, um, I, I think not more will come there as well. Yeah. Then group three, um, Ballantubber obviously they're a standout team and then there's Davids, Bahola, my Davids and Ahamore. But the thing with Ballantubber is they've come out of Mayo every time but they haven't been able to give Curfin a major challenge. Curfin have got over them by the skin of their teeth but it's been a comfortable three points. Um, you'd have to wonder, is Mayo football at the standard that Galway football is? Because when you've seen Ballantubber the last few years, you'd nearly think that the teams behind Curfin could beat them. Yeah, I can't say too much bad about Ballantubber because uh, our own club man is managing them. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Kevin Johnson, is their manager. You know, uh, massive GA man, massive interest in football. And, and to be fair to him, he's gone down to Ballantubber on one two in a row, which you know, with Casabar the way they were going, is a huge, huge success. And I know Kevin has a massive interest in you know the sports science and the stats and all that. So he's brought a huge professionalism professionalism to um. To Ballantubber. Um, why they haven't beaten Curfin? Look, 
you know, why isn't anyone beating Curfin really? Uh, you know, they've they've hammered teams in all Ireland finals a lot more than they've hammered Ballantubber, to be fair to them. Uh, so, you know, Ballantubber have come with plans. Have they come with a plan to contain or have they come with a plan to win? I would say the former, really. Um, you know, Kevin mightn't like me saying that, but sure, you know, we'll have that conversation again. But I think the plan has been to contain, 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 and then try and nip them. Um, they've never really gone for it against Curfin from what I've seen in what they've done in the Mayo Championship, you know. So so maybe this year is the plan is to is to is to is 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 to move it a bit quicker this year and, and maybe actually go at a, a curve in if they get there. But I think to, for Ballantover to win three in a row in Mayo is going to be very difficult given uh, what I know about Castle Bar. Um so yeah, so you know, not to get over the line against Curfin in, in the last two or three years. I would say disappointed, but Kevin is up there again this year, and and you know they're putting in a huge effort to really go for it. And I think it, it, Mayo is not what they're looking at this year. They need to get to the Holy Grail, which you know for teams in in Mayo and, and in Galway are, are iconic championships. So that's what they're pushing for. Um, and it, I'd say it's the last hurrah for Ballantubber before Castle Bar come back come back and take over. And, and this year has to be it. Now uh, the final part of the show, we'll move on to. Uh... Your five underrated footballers who don't get the credit they deserve within the media. Um, we'll start with you, Shane. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, trying to trying to pick these out, pick these out. I suppose it isn't it easy because there's a lot of coverage for you know you often see underrated players. But um, the ones I went for were um, Don Cohen from Mead, um, Brian Fox from Tipperary, um, Stephen O'Brien does get coverage, but. How he didn't get an all star last year, I don't know. Uh, Niall Scully, I think an unsung hero of the Dublin team. And I went for Rory Dean as well in Cork. Like a lot of people outside the Cork, I suppose, wouldn't, wouldn't be very aware of Rory and what he's come back from. So th- they were my five. Um, you know, Brian Fox, he's sold for Tipperary for 10 or 11 years, like, and um, plays the sweeper role to a T and is just, you know, a typical. Uh, you know, he, his uncles would have been. His uncle was Pat Fox, who was a brilliant hurler for Tipperary. Like you know, great pedigree there. Like and um, just a, you know, a really solid fellow who do whatever job is given to him for the team. Don Keown, you know, excellent for me. You know, um, you know, a real powerhouse for them. And again, doesn't get that credit. I think Stephen O'Brien like was the main reason. One of the main reasons that Kerry got the All Ireland final last year. Um, I definitely think he should have been an All Star. Scully, the same. I think he's just a very important player for Dublin. Noting Flash does his job every single day. And, um, you know, Rory Dean. I think Rory Dean has come back from, I think it's two cruciates. And, you know, was was super last year for Cork uh, against Kerry in the Munster final and against Tyrone in, in the first half, especially with the powerful runs. And I think he's going to be a very important player for Cork this year. So they'd be my five. And now moving on to your five, Finney. Yeah, I went. Uh, I went for Johnny Heaney from Galway, obviously from my own county. Um, exceptional, exceptional player the last number of years under Kevin. And again, moved back into corner back this year. Who, you know, when I spoke to him after his first game, you know, he was dreading it because he's not. You know, he's a footballer. He can play a half forward, half back. But he's been brilliant under Kevin Walsh's um, tenure, and 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 so far this year to go back in corner back, and when he's not a natural corner back, and you know he scored goals, he's setting up scores, and he's and you know he's marking people as well. So you know, obviously we've got the Damians and the Shanes, you know, here in Galway and the Ian Burks, but you know for the last five years our most consistent player has been Johnny Heaney, and he, he doesn't get the credit half the credit he deserves. Uh, I went for Jason Doherty and Mayo. Um, you know, we always hear about the O'Shea's, the O'Connors. Uh, the goalies in Mayo and stuff like that, but but Jason Doherty for you know for the last ten years, you know as a ball winner, you know crucial scorer, stands up in big games, you know you know comes out wins a big kick out and you know, when the game is in the melting pot, puts in a hit, great tackler, uh, completely underrated for Mayo. You know he's been up there with their best players uh, over the last ten years and and he's been consistent as well. Played through a lot of injuries. Uh, I went for David Byrne in Dublin. Um, this guy, you know, I suppose it's hard to get credit in Dublin, like when you're playing with the, the players that they're playing with. But David Byrne, you know, as a corner back, you know, kicked some scores last year. Marks his man, goes about his business very quiet. You know, I, I, I think people in Dublin were saying, ah, he's, you know, I don't know about him. But, you know, you kind of, a guy is doing well in the corner and you kind of forget about him, especially in a Dublin team. But he's he's been exceptional man marker in, in, for Dublin and, you know, for attacking and, and very comfortable on the ball. And, you know, he didn't get half the credit he deserved. You know, Johnny Cooper, Philly McMahon and these guys. But 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 David Byrne has been solid for them. Uh, I went for uh, Rory Dean as well in Cork. Uh, 
serious footballer and I suppose if they put a player cam on a, on a, on a guy playing football he'd be your man he's all action um, you know he's a great style great ball carrier great leader for Cork you know even though the last while they haven't been going great but I think if they're to drive on this year and do Anthem he needs to be playing um, you know and, and, and in Cork you always look for the inside forward who's going to win a ball uh, who's who's going to kick a monumental score and they've had those classy players in the past but I think now the their team has changed and the epitome of their team being successful in the last year or two has been has been Rory Dean I think just a, a fantastic footballer um, and and last I went for Niall Scully as well um, Niall Scully again you know you, you probably picked a lot of Dublin lads in this because they've played but Niall Scully has no all-star or anything but he's really been better than a lot of Dublin players in the last while you know goes about his business puts his heart in the line you know, sets up a lot of scores for everyone else. You know, there's always a move there where that might finish with a Conor Callahan or a Dean Rock, but 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 it starts with Niles Scully coming forward and going back. And I know Brian Howard has come on the scene and got um, a lot of credit, but but I think you know one of the standout individuals for the Dublin five in a row, or certainly the last three, ha- has been Niles Scully. And again, you know, when names are created, it's hard to go away from them, and the media loves them. But you know, it's very hard to to replace Paul Flynn as well. And I think I think I actually think he has done that. That's all for this week's Backdoor Football Show. Uh, next up on the show, we'll have uh, Goal Footballer Damien Gomer. Hello, and you're welcome to Pair 2 of the Backdoor Football Show. Delighted to be joined by Anna Down and Goal Footballer Damien Gomer. Um, firstly, Damien, um, how did you find lockdown? Lockdown is uh, very tough to the least. Um, I don't think any of us expected to to I suppose live in a time where we can find our houses for a certain amount of time but it was it was weird but it was nice in a way that we got to I suppose spend more time with your family and um I suppose it made you appreciate the things that you couldn't do in the past like meeting up for coffee or going to, going to the pub with the lads or whatever whatever your hobbies were I suppose you kind of took that for granted up until now but um, it's just it's just been weird it's 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 been nice in some ways and not so nice in other ways just, you know, very strange times. And uh, back with the club now, um, what's it like with a county player playing the club first and then you'll have county after, I suppose? Um, I think there's actually, there's probably something to it. I think the, the GA will find that if if there was a way of uh, progressing it and, and keeping it for years, it's actually very refreshing. But normally you're coming, you're coming back to your club and, at the end of like a hard slog, you're playing FBD in January, February. You're, you're training all over Christmas, then you've got the national league, and then you've got a championship until either winter or you get knocked out, and then you're going back at your club. So every county player played so much football for the club. Nearly, you're nearly overplayed at that stage. Whereas this year, it's it's fresh. Everyone's mad for a bit of football, and now you're playing with your club. You've you've all the time in the world that there's no county training. You're able well into, into your club so it's actually very enjoyable and it's something that I'd say the GA should up try and keep for. and um, obviously you usually be playing with the county first and then go back to the club do you find that hard as a county player say like take for instance you got to the semi-final against Dublin and then you had to go straight back to the club like if you're getting to the latter stages it's obviously hard to go back straight to the club yeah it is it's harder I suppose it's just the load that you're going to have if you're training you're training hard for nine months and like to try and perform at the best all through your county and come back to your club and try and try and perform at a top level with your club then as well can be different at the time um, and it's just it's sometimes it can be a lot for the body but um, I suppose trying to condense it trying to condense it the way it is now and it's nearly forced by COVID-19 it's nearly in a good in a good sense you can see why I know every club is probably the same but the numbers that are at training club back was way over what he ever used to be because I'd say everyone's eager the short season now it's enjoying it and I suppose um, cherishing the fact that they can go back playing and meet new, new people again it's it's, it's great but yeah um, I think it can be hard I don't, even if it, even if you finish your championship early it can be hard it just because basically most county teams are training October, November onwards and they're only, only kind of getting going with their clubs in October it, it turns into a nearly a 14-month kind of um, slog for 
players and club players are in fact as well as well. And uh, you obviously set up Atlantic Wellness Recovery this year. Um, what was the it was obviously tough, I'd say, when COVID came uh, just after setting it up. But um, what made you set that up? Um, a few different things. I've always kind of wanted to get into business in some shape or form. And probably the one that spurred me on to do it most was when I got injured last year and not having that type of facility around the place, um, especially with an ankle injury or any, any bone injury, soft tissue injury. Like the swelling is is obviously a key factor in trying to trying to reduce swelling after a surgery to get back playing. Key and you're you're constantly in and out of it, and the ice is just melting. And so like the cryotherapy that help in that sense. And I suppose like with Galway, with, with like semi professional setups, you have you have different avenues and you have different things that you can you you get access to because you're in that setup. Whereas the normal club player might not have. That access it. Say we have a set of normal tech routes to go there. You might be able to go to prior turbo bats. Some, um, some teams might have them in their setup. Like I know the Premier League setup has uh, turbo bats, but I just want, it's basically set up in, in, in order to, to allow every everyday people to use it. You know, in a recovering from injury or trying to get their body in as best as possible in order for them to be able to play at the highest level and to constantly they train and not break down and um, especially when you, you have a big workload coming on with you yeah and um how's it going like after lockdown now yeah lockdown um obviously it was it, it was hard COVID-19 has kind of affected many businesses around the place and if I had known that the situation if COVID-19 was coming around the corner I wouldn't have opened up in January um, it probably wasn't the best timing for myself but Look at these are risks you take in life, and um, look, it, 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 it could be better and it could be worse. Um, fairness, it was just, yeah, it's, 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 it's opened up since last month or week now, and it's been it's been going steady. Like, obviously, you can't allow as many people in as uh, pre COVID, and you have to take more protocols. An awful lot more, I feel like I'm cleaner after, after every session I do in there, wiping out equipment. But it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's different, but. No, it's been, I suppose, with the, with the condensed club season now, we've been trying to get busier and busier because teams are starting to book in and, and space are filling up fairly quickly. Fairly quick. um, I suppose anyone that wasn't doing training over the lockdown is struggling or, or trying to get fit now and their bodies are really breaking down or they're trying to help their bodies not break down. Um, so it, it, it is ticking along, but obviously, if I hadn't to shut for, for the couple of months. And obviously, uh, a bad time for lockdown to come for the Galway footballers. Uh, Flinders in the league, uh, could have relegated Mayo. Uh, you're probably going to win the league, but uh, there's going to be no league final. Um, but it was it was a bad time to come, really, really. Yeah, I suppose um, it was like momentum is a big thing in 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 GA and in in sport in general. But I suppose we really just um, with power coming in with nice little momentum going, lads were feeling fun. It was good. It was going. It was going well. Obviously, it was going to as well, and and that can vary. Like, and you have to push on championships a different game, um, as well. But it's important that you, I suppose we were trying to finish out the league as strongly as possible in the new manager, and we we're all kind of putting our hands up and trying to play a uh, championship. So I think it just it got the best out of it. Some and um, played out of the skin during the league, and like it, I suppose Curfew lads coming in and, and standing up as well. Was really important, like so. It was good. It was good, but it was just at the end of the day, it was kind of league. We wanted to be targeted, to set a strong league, and then still went to win the championship. Obviously, um, that didn't happen. But look, we'll see. We'll we'll get over club championship and see what the situation is like um, after the club championship, and then we will kind of go from there. Yeah, and the new players coming in this year: Conor Gleeson, Sean McCurran at fullback, then Ronan Steed, obviously coming in the midfield, and seeing a lot of go in the twenties who won the Connacht Championship coming in as well. Like competition for places must be huge now within that squad. That is, yeah. There's always like in fairness, always, always had injuries. Always, always trying to bleed in a couple of players each year, trying to uh, challenge the position. I suppose it's important. Always like you, you see it's what the successful double teams always have one two like kind of came in there 
one year and then they bring in Owen Merchant another year. They're always building new young talent. I suppose reaping the rewards. They're 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 building a I suppose a really strong squad and then with the strength numbers. And I think that's probably what Forex trying to do here. Um, quite developing a strong squad and bringing in as many as many good players as they can to have not just strong fifteen, strong strong twenty. And uh, it's going to be a knockout championship. Do you prefer that now than the old system with the Super 8s and the Provincial Championship? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard. Like, the Super 8s were nice because we get more games. Um, it's more, it's, it, it can be very competitive. It's just obviously depends on the game played. Like, I suppose you have that fiasco of whether, whether to go to Pro Park or not. Um, and then the games that were in Newbridge that year in, in Kildare were very exciting. Smaller front smaller stadium, better atmosphere, and probably led, led to a better game. But um, no, the, I think the knockout would be, it would be possibly um, the GA could have missed something with a speed overhaul. But I think like everyone, everyone's still back. So, I know it'll be it, like look at it, it is what it is. I would have taken, I would have taken Anderson at the start. I was, I wasn't one of the people that was would have said that GA was going to go ahead and all. I was doing doing my training uh, over lockdown on my own for a while, and then. We were allowed to meet up in two, three, but I was basically doing it out of board because I didn't think it was a championship. So the fact that there is anything at all, I would have taken any, whatever the GA would have gone up, I would have been happy. I suppose you just, you'd, you'd be happy to be playing anything. So. Exactly. And um, it's going to be a winter football championship this year. Will you have to do anything different in your preparation now than you do in a summer championship? Um... I don't know. Um, it'll be it'll be very different. Like I suppose it depends. It depends on what the weather throws. Like obviously in Ireland, you could get any anything from December, a sunny day in September, to a snow shower in summer. Like so, I think I think we're well equipped in Ireland to deal with the weather. We're used to playing FPD league games in basically floods. I mean, playing floods in the before, and we've played. In and we've we've done. I think we've done played in every um, sort of weather. I don't think it'll have a b- massive impact. Obviously, the heavier the ground gets, the more taxing it is. Um, it could lead to the injuries, but uh, hopefully, I don't. I don't think they'll be, they'll be using. Obviously, handling stuff, the basic skills of the game will become very important as it gets kind of as it gets closer to Christmas. And the pitch is getting worse conditions. Then there's talks of using more if the use. It. Barca won't be as much as um, neutral venues, but um, no, I don't think I don't think we change it. And uh, you're playing centre forward this year. Um, you you were playing full forward, obviously, uh, before that. What is your favourite position? Uh, my favourite position is definitely in around in around the goal. I think I I think I it's my best position, but um, I actually am enjoying kind of being out around eleven. You get on a bit more ball, and you get you get a bit more spare time, you get a bit more freedom, and you can kind of attack. You can attack at at different angles. And of course, the, the other side of it, not being attacked with double marks at eleven, whereas in your inside you can get blocked up. So I'm enjoying even just being out around the middle, catching kickouts, and um, uh, a bit different, but it's enjoyable. And the new rules have obviously uh, came in this year and they're going to be implemented in the club championship, which is baffling really because there's a lot of drama usually with referees in club championship and to be able to have these new rules in as well, it's going to be a lot to handle. But uh, as a forward, obviously, and full forward, are you happy with the attacking mark? I wouldn't be. I don't think we, we're playing like playing and training and stuff. I don't think... It's a rule that should have been brought in, really. Like, like it's very easy to take advantage of it. If, if teams properly train for it, it'll, it'll just become a game of marks. Like, because it, it, it's, it's an easy one. It's a cop out. A forward just has to catch the ball and then he has to catch the ball. It takes the art of defending out of the game. Like, even in our own club, come up against like, like, if I get a ball and I'm, if I get a ball into my chest and I catch it, I'm going to obviously take my mark rather than take my own score. Because if you take them on for a score, you're not going to go to the Whereas if you, if you put up your hand, you have a free shot at the score. So it takes, it takes the, 
That's what, take the emphasis away from the defender. Like obviously, the best of defenders will take the ball off you. We'll get that chance if people start using the mark. So I don't know. I don't think it's the best option for, for football. Yeah. And uh, just looking at Kevin Walsh's uh, time um, over Galway, and you're obviously put captain. Um, but like getting to your first All Ireland semi final since 2001, um, winning a Connacht title when there was such a long famine, getting to League final, the criticism really from Galway supporters is very harsh. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, um, a lot of people. But well, see, a lot of people have, have short memories. And you you think out in sport and awful long. It's you get you get funny goods on your last game, or your last your last couple of games, or maybe your last season. But like, if you if you think of where where we were when we started competing before Kevin came in, Kevin came in and, and it's still the, a really solid defence where we went to the key. Without conceding a goal in, in a whole league campaign, he showed up our defence. Started competing with the big boys. He hadn't beaten Mayo. Mayo had five in a row kind of titles. Close in the first year, Kevin took it over, and then Beth in the second year. Um, we just we kind of we developed an awful lot of things under um, through di- through radio coaching and, and different things. And most people forgot about that. But again, getting up and da- like beating Kerry down in Tralee for the first time in years. Um, Playing against the Dubs, drew with the Dubs in, in Pierce Stadium, lucky to lose out in the league final, a couple of points, getting to the semi final again all, all in one season. Like, it showed the growth that we had under him. And he, uh, yeah, people criticised maybe that he was a bit defensive and stuff, but if it, any team, any team, any good team you see, it's just um, they don't they don't probably get as much slack for it. It's it's it, it's like sometimes he got uh, slack for age and. Obviously, it was, like, we, were the, we were the people on the pitch, we were the players, and it was up to us to do something. Behind it. it wasn't that Kevin was to play negatively or play a certain way. Sometimes that just gains speed out that way. Um, you defend and then you try and attack it in numbers. And no more than Dublin do it. Um, you see good club turf in do it. Numbers, attacking numbers. We, we, we Under Kevin, we defended the numbers and attacked the numbers. Sometimes our tra- transition mightn't have been as quick as it would like, and then that's where I was proud. It, it, the game turned into a possession game, and a lot of a lot of teams will hold on to possession rather than trying to force it away. And um, yeah, he like look at he he gave us he gave personally he gave myself a great opportunity to captain Galway and and win a con win two kind of titles under him and uh, win a league division two league under him and uh, got to the league final. In Division One, which hadn't been done in many years, we're lucky not to look to like. So I think I think people just have short memories when they when they think back of they they look at the last match or the last season, whereas he was there for years, and that's that's what you have to look at over the whole thing and where he brought us from was, was exceptional. I thought. And like even when you look back at that All Ireland semi final against Dublin. I know the scoreline doesn't reflect it, but when you think of the opportunities you left behind you that day in the first half, missing the penalty, probably weren't as accurate from freeze as you would have liked and uh, from open play as well. Like You had a lot of opportunities and probably should have been ahead against Dublin in the first half that day. Yeah, well, like, yeah, it's, like when you look at it, we left, yeah, probably left one five or one six, myself included, missed a couple of, a couple of easy shots for the goal. And like, it's a good team, you just can't, you can't afford them sort of misses like but like like Dublin do then they came out in the second half and they and they um blown us away. We we probably tried to force it too much in the second half, trying to go for we fell a few points behind, probably went for goal was a little bit earlier. Um we could have and probably if we kept kicking it still we could have played with that back into the game. And even things you learn as you go along and but they, they, missing the them opportunities the first half the throughout the game. And do you think the uh, gap can be narrowed by ending Dublin six in a row this year? Yeah, I, th- I think it can. Like, see, I think especially this year the way the way COVID has gone, like they're, they're out. Every good team gets bet, and the whole team is going to go unbeatable for years and years. And every every good thing comes to an end as well. Like, so they're they're going to be bet. It's just it's up to other teams to catch them like and do the do the right thing. And I think this year could be could be like under a change of management um might affect a small bit and you know, 
with the with COVID coming in, people won't be training um, as much. Like you know, you've no pre season, you know, your pre season is your club championship. Um, you're you're going to be battling against the lads that you're going to be playing with later on in the year. Um, so it it, it 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 nearly levels off as uh, field. But okay, yeah, I think that obviously they're exceptional side, but they're they're still beatable on um, if anyone. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And then like. Looking back at your time in jail, it's, you didn't make uh, any. You didn't make the senior team. Um, you were in the Hogan stand that day. Um, what do you put that down to? Like, do you do you feel you drastically improved after secondary school, or do you feel you just didn't have an interest in it? Uh, it was probably it was probably growth more so. I find I, like towards the end, of, just like towards the end, they started more so getting away the height and, and filling out a small bit. Um, and that would have helped a lot. Like, quite small one and losing first. And I don't like. I just didn't have huge interest when I was in there. But I did. I did up until maybe junior cert fifth year, and then that was it. Just kind of. I don't know. Didn't didn't have the same interest I had it, but my diet probably didn't help me. Um, and then I just kind of went along with it when playing with my club and started finding a bit of form in again with my club. Once you have, once you get a couple of games under your belt, you can. Uh, Get a bit of confidence going, and next thing you fall into on 21. That was it, then it kind of never looked back. Then build confidence after confidence. Amazing, like it's 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 a bit of luck along the way uh, to make the breakthrough. And thankfully, I got a bit of luck um, by getting into the under 21 squad. And like after secondary school, did you focus massively on bulking up? No, I didn't. Like I didn't. No, I think like I wouldn't have been. I even now I'm still not a massive gym goer. Like I do, I do a small bit, but and if I didn't have to do it at all, I wouldn't go near it. But I, I just I'd probably be lucky enough. I'd be fortunate enough that I have good genetics. Like all like my two brothers would be over six foot. They'd all they don't like them wouldn't really gym, but he'd still be in. He'd still be fairly um, strong as well. Like. So. Genetically, I, I'm probably lucky enough that even if I if I went away from the gym for a while and came back, I'd still be able to lift pretty much the same. Like so, I wouldn't be bad. I'd put on muscle handy enough. Like so, um, I suppose that helps. That helps as well. And um, that would have that would have probably been that would have been a big factor in helping me. I suppose get to where I've gotten to today. And then you were called into the go uh, under 21s. Um, I've heard this story a couple of times. You didn't actually think you were called in um, at the start, but do you feel that massively stood to you uh, today as a footballer getting called in that time? Yeah, it was because I was only I was only out of minor there. I didn't make the minor panel, and that, that summer, and then I got I got a text around Christmas time. Um, from Alan Finn to join the under 21. So that was only six weeks after I didn't make minor panels. So it was a bit weird, but I was playing fairly well with my club. Junior C, like I played Junior C, a couple of Junior C played well. Then ended up to Junior A, played, I got man of the match in Junior A League final and then got called in after that. Um, so it was kind of climbed the ranks basically. And basically, I just went in. The only reason I went in was because I knew the lads. Barely was there and Shane and, and Carl Moraine and he, in Birkin, then from they're all there, and I, I went for a look. I'm only young, I'll put my name in the door for next year, the year after. I didn't think I'd make the panel that year, but I said I'd give it a try anyway. So they might, they might know who I and they might give me a call back. I just kind of started playing well and grew in confidence, and one thing led to another. And then I was starting in championship, and um, it was the 5th of May or something. Or fifth of April or something like that, and she was hitting in Sligo first time. It was it kind of went from strength to strength there, and never looked back. I suppose. And looking back at that win against Cork, um, it was a great game that day. But um, for six seeds to come through, like it must be pleasing to play with all those like Quinton girls came through, Tom Flynn, um, Adrian Brady, Ian Burke, and Shane, and yourself. Um, but when you were in that team, did you feel more people from that team would have came through to the senior setup. Yeah, I suppose you probably do, but like, you, know, you, you can't you can't take it for granted either when you're you're involved in a team like that. You kind of have to try. Like, it's quite often the lads who are possibly have are good back there. They need to work hard to get that skill, and some people get lazy and maybe 
they think they they're the finished product and then they fall through because other lads are trying. To do it. Like there's a great one. Johnny Heaney is a, is a great example of someone. He didn't make that under 21 panel that time. Tried to make the next, but didn't make it. But kept kept trying to make it, and eventually he didn't. I don't think he, he made the, he made the under 21 panel then in the final year, but um, missed out on an Ireland medal because he always played an and now he's one of, one of our best players um, with Galway. Like so I just I show show the distance that you could, if you don't make it at once, try harder, try again, and if you fail again, try again. And I suppose his story is very encouraging for young people to through and to just keep trying and you'll get there and eventually if you if you put in enough work. And um you're calling into the Goal Hurdies. Um do you ever have any ambition of playing with the Goal Hurdies? Uh it was I was calling uh, it was kind of it was on it was on the fringe, but it was never I would have loved to would have loved to not that I would have thought it was good enough, but I would have Love to have tried it just to see what it like, but I no more than no more than rugby. I I'd love to try it. But I'd love to try it a few. Times. But obviously, um, football would be my priority, and that'd be my main sport. And if I was to go in playing hurling, I'd never play football playing hurling, so I would have done the both together. Um, and you probably my my football skills would have suffered my hurling suffered, and just wouldn't have worked. But um. Yeah, it crossed my mind, and I did think about it, but I, I genuinely don't think it would have been good enough anyway, and it would have been a waste of time. And um, inconsistency is probably an issue associated with Galway um, in the last few years, um, and you're obviously trying to get it now. Like You're obviously involved in the Galway team now. Can you see uh, Galway winning Sam McGuire in the next few years? Yeah, I think we can. Like To be honest... I, I, all the time. I wouldn't I wouldn't play if I didn't think we were going to win Northern Ireland. If there was a certain year I didn't think we were going to win Northern Ireland, I probably wouldn't play. Because you put so much time in it. And the, I suppose the fact that you won in under 21 All Ireland, I remember playing that in All Ireland. It was my first year playing with All Ireland. Like you win, you, you win All Ireland your first season playing with All Ireland. Like, oh, this is going to happen all the time. And then the following year we went out and got both league and thrown. It's like that's a stark reality of, of like you can't take anything for granted and you work hard for everything. But um I suppose yeah, the fact that a lot of lads there, like the younger lads through back to minor lads, um and stuff like that, and older lads have won on twenty one all good balance and lads know what it's like to win all out. So that's it's important to have that in team. Yeah, I don't I to be honest, I don't think the many people be there for think that would win it and I definitely wouldn't if we, if we thought we had a chance of winning on Ireland we would play because it's obviously that's why you play for it, what you want to do it. if you can't if you can't get if I was to finish my career without winning on Ireland I'd be very 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 disappointed and yeah um, Porus came in this year and um, obviously well known for his uh, speech when he came out to start Dan Hunt and Leston and all Ireland's an underachievement but like as a forward it, it must be unreal, really, having a forward like that uh, talking to you before a match. Yeah, I suppose, like, everyone would get great, great um, pride and, and, I suppose, just kind of confidence from him. He's a very, he's a very confident man and I suppose he'd, he'd, he'd breed confidence into his players as well. And I suppose you just, you just respect people no more than Kevin. Um, someone that you look up to, that you've watched playing football and... and I suppose win everything there there is to win in, in, in football. And like watching that is, is obviously growing up helps your helps your ambitions and helps your confidence. So it's great. Been there, done that. And I suppose he now he's trying to pass on whatever whatever he has to other players and, and, and help us I suppose get to the same stage that they got to when they were playing. Yeah, and then like the inter county games involve so much GPS statistics, everything. For basically an amateur sport, do you think it's at too much of a professional level that it could be put back a small bit, say? I yeah, I think I think it is gone to a professional level, but I, I don't think it'll ever pull back. I think it'll go more and more. So I think it's a stage where it's actually have to go professional because like the way it is, like it's a, it is a full time job. Like people trying to trying to work, like you have to go to work in the morning after you could be up and 
up in Tyrone. Like we've, we've gone to games up in Tyrone, and the wall, you might go up to that and, uh, you and stay overnight. You might have a meeting that night and dinner and stuff, and go, go to bed, get up and play game Sunday. And then you're traveling home. You might be home by nine, ten, eleven o'clock. So you're gone all weekend. Especially if you're bad for me, you don't have any kids or anything like that. But if you have um, wives and kids at home, like you're traveling all weekend. You're not home till eleven, twelve o'clock on a Sunday, Sunday night, and you're up again and then maybe seven o'clock Monday morning, asking for an injury, basically. So it's um, it's 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 not easy. It's not easily done. And uh, would you be open uh, for it to be professional? I think I think it will, I don't think it'll happen in my time, but I think it, I think it's going that way, and I, I probably would. Yeah, um, I don't know how they're going to do it. I think something's going to have to be done about it that it, it gets done in some regard or form. I think it's just gone like they're asking for players for not to be professional. It has to go. It, it kind of has to go that way. Yeah, and like it, it probably would make sense, like because even like players in the game are being sorted out with sponsorships and different sorts of stuff. So, and I suppose it, it is even it out a bit more because there, there's a lot of players say in Dublin who get stuff, and then if you're a top player in Elite or Carlo, you're not getting half as much. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, if, if there was a, if there was um, I don't know how they strategically do it around the. The, the country, but I think something like that would have to have been be thought out. Yeah. And just finally on the inter county stuff, um, should the provincial championships go? You're seeing the Leinster championship; it's a dead duck, really. Is it time for tier one, tier two, or is it just time for a Champions League format? I think. I think personally, I, I the the Champions League format I think would be good if you. I, mean, I suppose the way the way a club championship is done in each county, where you'd have groups of, groups of fours or, or guys or like that, something like that. Um, I, personally, I like the I like the provincial championships, but would I be saying the same thing now if we're in if we're in Ulster this year, where the knockout championship and it's probably one of the most competitive? I don't know, but, I, um, but like yeah, the Leinster the Leinster one, but I think, like I Connacht has gone very competitive now with. Um, Mayo were common themselves, obviously, and Sligo and Leitrim, like Leitrim winning the division last year, and like it's it's, it's building nicely. But um, I think, yeah, I think I I still like the provincials. I, I don't know, probably old, but um, maybe after provincials, then you go into something or or do it at the league on I'm not sure. I don't mind. I don't mind the way it is at the moment, but I would be in favour, like if, if there was something. Uh, like a group format, then I think friendships are important. I, I like to have them, and they make a group format for the Ireland series with a, two, with a two tier or something like that at the end of it. Top two go into um, quarterfinals for Sam or something, and then have a have a tier two one as well. For, so you're actually paying for something as well. And uh, moving on to the club scene, um, I suppose the big question on everyone's minds this year can Curfin be stopped? Um, hopefully, as an adult man, I hope so. Um, I think I, th I think they can. Obviously, as I said, same with Dublin. Like Curfin are very similar to Dublin. They're, they're um, a very professional side and they're a very good side. But, like they can they, they can be stopped as well. And all instead of all good teams get stopped eventually, but you, can, you just have to meet a better team on the day. And I suppose we'll see in Galway. We'll probably have very competitive teams. The last three, like we ourselves, we were close to beating them. But we got over the line. Same, same with you. The the key thing is knocking over the line with them. And some team eventually is probably going to it's going to get over the line someday. And that that could be this year, maybe not. But um, they're on the road a long time as well, which is tough going. Like they've they've had long campaigns. So, um, but yeah, I think I think again with COVID, like it's hard, it's hard to know how things how things will pan out. How much training was done over lockdown and stuff like that. So it, it could be very, very different this year, who knows? Yeah, and obviously the one point loss, like it must have been uh, so tough to take, obviously, because you they're the neighbours, obviously, and you don't want to be losing to the neighbours, but like to get so close and then for them to go on and win all Ireland, that must have been tough to take. Yeah, I think the, just the worst part was that we're up by, we're up by three points within three three times. Like fair enough, if you can see the goal, you're like, shite. Why we shouldn't have conceded the goal? But we, we didn't even concede the goal. We conceded 
four points in the trap. Uh, yeah, it was. It was sickening. But it was like every good team. If you don't put them away, or if you don't, if you don't um, kill the game out, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna fall behind in the end. They'll put it back. In. They're kind of very good. Like they're, they're, they've done that several times. They've done it against Montpellier Tomb. They just have great, I suppose, great patience on the ball and they work. They're very good footballers from all over the pitch, which is the mass panel to pick them. But like they, they have, they have players in fairness to do. And uh, looking at the goal group this year, um, probably people outside the county don't realise how competitive goal is actually getting. Um, but the group this year of my Colin, Montpellier, my law, and me and Brax, probably the group of death, like there's not one easy game in that group. Yeah, um, yeah, I wasn't very happy with the draw, no, I have to say. Um, no, it's, like, it's, I suppose the one thing where like, you look at that group and you say, well, at least whoever comes out of it is going to earn it. Like, whoever gets out of that group, they're going to be in a good position going into the, going into the quarterfinals. They'll have, they'll have three good, solid games under the belt. It, it's hard to pick who it could be. Obviously, I hope it's going to be ourselves. If we move value and the first game, which is probably the toughest, the toughest start we could have got, and then and then you have Mike Cole and Mio Brannox on a high coming up from last year, so it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a tricky one. But um, I, like basically, even when I was chatting to the, like after the draw was made, lagging with the lads that like whoever whoever comes out of it, fancy going very near to to um, county final, I suppose, and hopefully, and and, and you'd hope would be winning it. But um, it, yeah, it was, it, you're better off having a tough group to set you up next year for the championship. Exactly, and uh, it's obviously a goal um, to get out of that group. Um, and I suppose, what is the goal this year in club championship? And then do you think there could be new players going into the Galway squad from club championship form who haven't been in the panel? Yeah, so I suppose, obviously, to win it, um, would be a dream. We haven't won it since 2001, so like everything's tiny. We're gonna down start competing, um, with the with 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 the big dogs and train. Everyone's gonna have to train knocker. Hurt. It's not no easy task, but yeah, I think like club championship is gonna be massive. Whoever's in form, you're playing base because it's not like it's not like every other year where you behave elite to try and get in form with with like you're literally you promote a club championship. You're to, the Mayo League game and the Dublin game, and um, so you're going to have to be hitting. Basically, if there's any, if there's any club, if there's any club players flying it, you can't. Like Park's not going to ignore that. He's, he's going to see if they're flying there and they're and they're fit and they're healthy and they're they're playing well with the club. But then obviously, you're going to have to be drafted into goal because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you have someone who's, who's playing so well at the moment involved in a setup where he can help help out the team? So, yeah, I think that you can definitely do that. And then finally, just to spill a few beans on the Galway footballers, um, who would you say is the best dressed in the panel? Ooh, um, the best dressed, um, probably I'd have to say I'd have to say Shaney because he he's, he spends a fortune down each of and they 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 kill him out well, so I I give him that. <laughs> um, worst dressed. Worst dressed, uh, Adrian Verley. He loves it. he loves his wacky tops. <laughs> <laughs> um, best in training. Best, sorry. Best in training. Uh, Gary O'Donnell. He's the man is pushing on, and he's probably he's probably the most solid trainer that we have. We're we're doing a training. We're back and forth. We're training him over lockdown. He's the fit man. They let they let him do five k every day if good. <laughs> and uh, worst trainer. Worst trainer. Um, well, who be the worst trainer? <laughs> uh, uh, Kieran Malloy is always giving excuses that he's injured. <laughs> um, loves himself. Uh, Shane Walsh. And then finally, um, one for you. Um, what would you say is your best sporting achievement to date? Best sporting achievement to date? Um, 
a mixture between the kind of finals with Galway seniors or the under 21. I, I really enjoyed the under 21 that year because it was my first year in, in um, playing with the Galway, playing with Galway, and that, that was probably, that was probably up there with the highlights because it was just a new experience for me and it was just a great year overall. So I'd say that that probably that between that and the and the kind of finals. That's all for this week's Backdoor Football Show. Thanks a million for your time, Jamie.